So I think this is main features were just announced uh, and I'm going to spend 10 minutes in order to uh, talk to you about the nine main features that were announced in the FFDC 2024. And let's actually jump with the first um, uh, feature, number one. Uh, and that is actually by the order that they've been announced to. And that's actually 50 plus new triggers. And that's for the flow 5.0. And if I go to Teleflow actually right now, and if I click on uh, any um, um, any action flow that you see, those are all the 50 new uh, uh, triggers that were announced. And uh, you can actually look into them. Another announcement that was made on the FFDC uh, by the time that there was announced is the new keyboard action. So now you should be able to uh, run a, a set of actions uh, using keyboard. And it says on a shortcut press. So if you, uh, this is a new action trigger on shortcut press and you can just press the key. So for example, you can press F uh, or F, G, H, for example. And uh, when, for example, you press uh, S, for example, uh, you get some uh, bunch of actions over here. So technically, you can actually create a very nice game with that, or uh, you can have a very nice shortcuts. And all of those features that I'm talking about will be available after one week. The third new announcement is number three. It's uh, every widget will be dynamic. So what that basically means is that uh, you will be able to set a template, a page as a template, and then using drag, uh, drag and drop, you should be able to uh, just create, for example, a slide bar. Uh, or a top menu or something like that, that would be unique for uh, every single uh, drop down that you have, sorry, every single dynamic uh, uh, widgets uh, that you have. So they give you also this example, which is uh, like you can have one widget, but in different shapes, uh, and you can reuse that widget uh, all over the place. There is also announced, uh, they also announced like number four is they announced a new uh, widget called Flex, uh, which will actually, I don't, I cannot uh, show it to you right now, guys, but uh, this will actually, the widget is flexible, the whole idea is it's a flexible widget and it will uh, be dynamic to uh, display your widget as a row or a column or grid view or wherever you want to. So uh, I cannot like test it right now, I cannot show you how it works, but this is what they showed at the FFDC. So that's a great, it sounds like a great widget, to be honest. Number five is they have announced a dev environments. And uh, what is dev environments means actually you can go to settings and there will be a new setting called dev environments and you can add new dev environments. So you can have like a prediction, let's say the, the developer, uh, that would be the name, sorry, those are the uh, values. Uh, I need to add a new dev environment, uh, which I guess, yeah, sorry, here. So that would be a developer, for example, and that would be my developer environment. And I can have valuable variables over here attached to the environment. So for example, if I want my API calls to hit my uh, dev environment, just create that, um, uh, for example, API call. So let's call it API call. And that would be the dev environment. Uh, and in my production, I want to be, uh, let's say, uh, production environment. Uh, so uh, this is uh, actually uh, about the new dev environment. A lot of people have asked about that. The dev environment, actually, it's only about uh, Firebase database right now, but they said that uh, Superbase is coming in the near future. So let's hope it's coming uh, shortly. Feature number six, which is one of my favorites. It's actually, you can now have the ability to have project dependencies 
and if you go to settings again there is a new setting called project dependencies and from here you can see all your dependencies in one place which is amazing you can see the versions as well those are not only the uh, dependencies that you have added to your project but also the dependencies that are used in further flow uh, and when you click actually over here the cool part is that this will add to uh, redirect you to the project uh, to sort of the dependency website, which is actually amazing. Um, and what's even cooler is that um, you can now add, you can now transform your uh, the whole project into a library, uh, and then you can uh, add it as a library in your project. So basically, you can have a project inside another project. And uh, for example, I can just give you an example. If you have set up like, uh, let's say, a Stripe integration or YouTube integration or any kind of integration to a third party, or uh, let's say uh, you have like a very solid authentication integration uh, and uh, you want to import in every single project that you create with using Featherflow, or you have some kind of templates, you can actually do it this way. And this will give you like uh, view the details and this will give you like uh, what is actually important. Like for in my example over here, it's important like uh, app uh, state variables, like API calls. Uh, it will import like everything that you can think of, uh, which is actually amazing. And if you go over here, you should be able to call those. To be honest, you should be able to go over here and um, go to yeah exactly. So go to uh, your API call and you can see library demo. It's the name of my library and you are able to import it, which is pretty pretty much amazing because uh, previously you were not able to do that. Uh, if you just copy and paste the actions, you get a bunch of errors. So that's much much appreciated. And to convert your project into a library, you can just go to publish as a library in the settings again, and you can change the version, uh, write a description, and then you can just click on publish, and that will publish your project as a library, and then you can import it to your other project as a library. Feature number eight that is coming to Flutterflow is that Wasp is actually coming to Flutterflow, which is web WebAssembly, which will actually make uh, your web apps much much faster so uh, I'm not having like much details about it so let's move to the next one which is feature number nine which is a VS Code uh, extension and that means that uh, you'll be able to download an extension in VS Code called Flutterflow and then you'll be able to sync your code between VS Code and Flutterflow. Uh, and uh, you can actually see they have live to demo this. Uh, they actually change a code uh, in VS Code and then click on a button, uh, which is called uh, push uh, to Flutterflow. Uh, and uh, that will automatically push it to the Flutterflow. You can even like create a new widget, for example, and it will automatically pop up with the boilerplate. Uh, so that's uh, amazing. It, it's working both ways, actually. It's working from Flutterflow to your uh, uh, local uh, VS Code, and it's working the other way around. I cannot show you a working demo right now because I think this is still not uh, announced like publicly. Like we don't have like access to it. Uh, but that's actually a super helpful. And the last thing they have announced is actually the AI tooling tools. Um, and there are a couple of AI tools that uh, you can use, uh, which are not uh, yet uh, in production. So you cannot use them, but uh, they are yet to come. So for example, you can draw. You can draw and uh, your drawing will be then uh, transcribed into an actual widget. So you can actually see that was the drawing and it was uh, uh, transmitted to that one. And it's converted to that one. So uh, that is amazing. You can also actually uh, do it with the uh, actions. So you can use the AI tool to also create actions as well. So you can just uh, write your action uh, and it will uh, seamlessly work. Uh, so it's like a great thing that is coming to uh, the further flow. So for example, uh, here uh, you can just uh, write uh, in your uh, magic cursor, for example, what actions or what kind of uh, widgets uh, you want to use, uh, and then uh, it will work uh, magically. So 
like this is super exciting because uh, most of the things like like all of the things they have uh, introduced uh, or they have shown in uh, FFBC actually worked. Uh, there was only one small caveat that uh, did not work, but they used the AI again and the AI actually fixed it. It's using your custom code as well. Uh, it's using your uh, already uh, widgets style of uh, your uh, project as well. So if you are using, for example, for the background, most of your backgrounds, white and you want to uh, convert it uh, to your style of your current page it will actually do that as well uh, so a lot of exciting things uh, a lot of exciting things here they're actually uh, building uh, the list view so they're using list view and it's actually i don't know if you see it on the left the bottom left it's actually generating the query automatically for you. I'm not sure if this will actually work for Superbase as well, but it's uh, or API calls, but it's working for uh, uh, for Firebase for now. Uh, so yeah, that's it uh, for now. Uh, those were all the nine top features that were announced on FFDC. I hope you liked that video. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, thanks. And uh, join my every Wednesday live sessions so you can actually ask questions. Thank you very much. And uh, thanks to all the members, of course, on my YouTube channel. Uh, if you haven't liked, subscribed, or if you are not, actually not a paid member to my YouTube channel, please consider so you can have access to 30 or plus uh, videos. Um, and yeah, thanks and happy for the flowing.